And we welcome now political strategist and commentator Rena Shaw, former senior congressional aide. Also joining us, Kurt Bardella, News Nation contributor and veteran political and media strategist. Uh, thank you both for being here this morning. A busy day in politics. Kurt, I'd like to start with you. So we're seeing this new polling. Seven swing states showing Harris with a slight edge over Trump uh, in Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, and then the candidates tied in Pennsylvania, which, uh, excuse me, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Arizona, Trump has the slight lead there. Uh, we do still have some time on the clock. How much do these campaign stops move the needle at this hour of the race specifically? I actually am one of those people who believes like, yes, you have to go to these states, obviously, and campaign there. But does it move the needle one way or the other? Probably not, in part because on the Republican side, Donald Trump is pretty well defined. There's not a lot of new ground, new territory there uh, to, to find out and move so-called undecided voters. Uh, and I think for Kamala Harris, uh, you know, th this is about enthusiasm. And I think the one thing about that polling that I found interesting is when you go a little bit beneath the top of, top of the ticket and a lot of the Senate races now where they were Democrats were running behind Joe Biden, uh, Biden was kind of a drag on the ticket. It's one of the reasons why he got out of the race in the first place. Those Democrat candidates, like in Arizona, Ruben Gallegos opened up a sizable lead over Kerry Lake. Uh, so it shows that there is a lot of enthusiasm trickling down just from the change that's been made. And if the Senate races and some of the gubernatorial races, like in North Carolina, are favoring Democrats right now, that kind of informally tells me that the top of the ticket is stronger than the numbers might suggest. So, Rena, a former Democratic Congresswoman, Tulsi Gabbard, she just endorsed the former president this week. We all remember that debate clip where Gabbard and Harris sparred in 2019, uh, with many political analysts saying Gabbard was incredibly effective. Here's a bit of their conversation. She put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. So there are reports that Gabbard is now prepping Trump for the upcoming debate, and she's also moderating his town hall in Wisconsin tonight. Uh, what do you believe her impact will be on his campaign overall? In this moment, Tulsi Gabbard's uh, impact will be slight on Trump because, look, at the end of the day, this is a candidate who doesn't stick to a script. So no matter how well prepped he is, he does tend to meet the moment and really sees whatever ground is there for him to gain. And I think on a debate stage, he tends to go for style, not substance. So that clip you just heard there for, with Gabbard and, and Harris and, and Gabbard really taking Harris's record in her time as AG in California, that was fact. But this election is about trust. Whose personality do you trust more? It's less about policy. Trump is going in as a known commodity. In a place like Georgia, it is tough for somebody like Harris to break through. Even though she has been the vice president for four years, there is a sense that she has to reintroduce herself. What kind of candidate do we have right now? Can Gabbard help Trump in a way that she could directly, you know, face off with Harrison? I don't think so. So this isn't really a game changer to me. Tulsi Gabbard's influence on the Trump campaign is what I'm talking about. I still see a path to victory for Harris, even if she's not able to really clinch the Sun Belt. I'm talking about Nevada, Arizona, Georgia. A lot of emphasis being put, is emphasis being put on Georgia. But like I said, there is still a path to victory there for Harris, even if she's not able to do as well as, as, as the campaign would hope in the Sun Belt states. So there is so much anticipation around this interview tonight. Kurt, Trump's campaign mocking Harris for bringing her running mate Tim Walls to this taped interview on CNN. Uh, the country really has already been introduced to Walls. So that argument uh, seems at this point a little lame duck. The criticism being she should be able to stand alone as the presidential nominee. Strategy, let's talk about this. Do you think this is a good look, a smart move for her campaign, Kurt? Yeah, because people who are tuning in to watch a Harris Fultz interview, they know who they're voting for. Uh, th th there's, again, there's not a lot of ground to, to, to get here. This is just checking boxes. And she's going to be standing alone on a debate stage with Donald Trump in, you know, in less than two weeks. So all of these criticisms that they're lobbying, 
there there's a real shelf life on them and it's just they kind of keep moving the goalposts first she's not doing any interviews she does one oh well now she needs to do it alone well then she's going to be doing a a debate coming up soon then it'll be well she hasn't done a press conference yet and all the while what republicans aren't doing instead of using that oxygen and air time to draw contrast with kamala harris on the policy issues they might have an advantage on they're, they're talking about stuff that no one voting in november is going to actually care about there's not a single voter who's going to go to the polls in november and think to themselves you know I don't like that Kamala Harris didn't do a solo interview with the media in August. I'm not voting for her. It doesn't exist. All right, Rena, we have about 15 seconds left. I'll give you the last word. Yeah, strategically speaking, I like this. You know, Governor Walz also has to introduce himself to the American public writ large. So why shouldn't he be sitting there? I mean, his, he, he was just named this past couple of weeks. And in that time, not all Americans have been fully paying attention. So I think this is actually a good opportunity because when you put it against the other ticket, J.D. Vance would literally sit there mute next to Trump. I, and we've seen that already. He's not really able to balance him well, whereas we've already seen Walls and Harris kind of do this nice balance of each other. I think it's a fine idea for her to have him sit next to her in this interview. And I think the country will be better off hearing from the both of them tonight. All right. Kurt Bardella, Rena Shaw, thank you both for joining us. Have a good morning. Thank you.